good morning, saints, and welcome, sinners. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you hear that mess? Did you just hear that mess from those, that chucklehead? Yeah, I, I tell you what, folks, I got to let some light into the box here this morning. Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Get yourself a cup of coffee. Get yourself a Tylenol after listening to that mess, right? Well, here's where we are, folks. You know, that's the that's the headline news. Remote viewing is real. Science says so. Okay. Okay. There's no doubt in my mind that remote viewing isn't uh, isn't real. But the question you have to always ask yourself is real to real from whom whom is it real from God or is it real from the dark side evil Satan which side because there's only two choices folks two it's either of God or it's of Satan there used to be that old adage remember that old adage uh, uh, you got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything well biblically you can you can compare that to what uh, Christ said, Jesus said, you're either with me or you're against me. So you'll either stand for the truth, which is me, or you're against me. And you get to, you get to travel down the wide, the wide, the broad way, the wide path to destruction. I mean, there's, there's nothing new under the sun here. Nothing new under the sun. So let me go ahead and do this real quick. Fair use, YouTube, fair use couple of days left in 2019 I still have my mm, my first amendment and my second amendment rights so I'm going to use them so fair use YouTube so I I, I had this video from this knucklehead um, not this clown this is this is this is Russell Targ and I think he's the guy that uh, they they spoof um, in Hollywood. But I'm gonna put I'm gonna put another one up here for you today, and I want you to listen very closely to this interview because he talks about the West not not accepting um, remote viewing, and you can call it a lot of different things, uh, ESPN uh, or ESPN. That's my joke. <laughs> I always say we must have ESPN. Because it's nonsense, folks. It's from Satan. It's you. You want to be led by by Satan? Go ahead. Be led by demonic powers. There are powers on this earth. There are spiritual powers, supernatural powers, uh, that exist. But you're either using them from the dark side or the good side. I mean, that, that's a beautiful revelation to have. That we don't we don't battle against flesh. We don't battle against each other. We battle, and that's why we're instructed to love everyone, because it's not their fault. They're being influenced by an evil spirit, an evil side. And just like Christians are influenced by Christ, the love of God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. That's where we get all of our direction from. And it's very simple. It's very simple. And that's why it's so important that we go and spread the news that Christ, that God became man through Jesus, died on the cross, came back through Pentecost, issued the Holy Ghost and all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And th that's the good news. That's the good news of Jesus Christ. Otherwise, can you imagine even being without that? I can't. I, I don't even go there, but from time to time I'll think, wow, what if we didn't have Jesus? What if we didn't have a loving, kind God? So it's all of us to, you know, expose evil for what it is. And it I'll tell you one thing, it's getting simpler. It's really getting simpler. I do a lot of research on a lot of these uh, these new topics that are coming into full view and recognition. The, the impending alien attack, and it's coming, folks. Oh, it's coming. Um, whether it's all made <laughs> in a studio again, which would be my guess, which some with a couple of very verifiable... Uh, eyewitness reports and massive big cities in the United States will be important because it'll be important to get all of those Christians on board who believe in UFOs. 
and believe the heliocentric model. What difference does it make what shape the Earth is? Oh, it'll make a big difference when the aliens come and you say, See, I told you the Earth was round because there's aliens and I saw them on a television screen. And I even saw them in my backyard. Oh, okay. Good. Good for you. Then, then turn in your Jesus card, go completely over to the dark side, and stand in the crowds that get to watch all of us true Christians get our heads chopped off. Fine, fine. A hundred years from now, we'll be looking down at you. So make a decision, and it's not an easy decision. This is difficult for Americans. This is very hard for Americans because they're so fat and lazy and comfortable and easy in their believism. They go to church just to go to church and write a check struggle through the 20-minute sermon that the pastor made up on on his 12-day 12, 12, um, series of, of love. It's a mess out there, folks. It's a mess. You have to know the difference between what is real and what is imagined. And most people don't. Most people do not know what the difference is. And that's sad imagination or reality which one and that should be the test so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to go ahead and play this um this second video i'm going to keep things under they're difficult to load folks they're really difficult to load but i'm gonna anyway i'm rambling sorry i'll get back to the point and did i say good morning good morning <laughs> it's good to have you here uh quick weather report from minnesota after three, two and a half days of cold, uh, drizzly rain, rain, uh, it's now 24 degrees and snowing and all that rain on the ground has turned to ice. Ain't nobody going nowhere for a long time in Minnesota. But this is on remote viewing and uh, let me get you, let me get you over to that. I'm going to do this one on easy believism here in a couple of days, so let me get you ready for that too. But today we're talking about remote viewing. And uh, just exactly what they what they do. So thank you and stand by. Here we go. Stand by. Bluetooth ready for connection. That's my audio Bluetooth engineer. Connected. That's my audio engineer Bluetooth. I'm telling you, folks, it ain't easy being. Being multi, uh, multi uh, talented, yeah. Go ahead and say it. Because the love of God allows me to be so. All right, here we go. Come on now. Receive stuff any place in the world that could be an extraordinary intelligence source. In this video, I want to briefly discuss the newly released documentary, Third Eye Spies which details the 20-year, highly classified, top-secret CIA remote viewing program. Hey, I'm Brett Stewart, author of Remote Viewing, The Complete Guide. I've been studying, consulting, and teaching in the field of remote viewing for the past decade. And if you're new to this channel, hit that like and subscribe button. I regularly discuss topics like meditation, intuition, and remote viewing, and how you can easily apply these techniques in your own life. Now in this video, I wanna talk about the documentary that was just released today, February 26th, directed by Lance Mungia, and starring some of the biggest names in the remote viewing field, such as physicist Russell Targ, Hal Putoff, and even viewer 001, Joe McMonagall. And I want to talk a little bit about why I think this film is so important. You see, most people in the West, they've never even heard about remote viewing or the millions of dollars that the U.S. government spent on developing a repeatable psychical method that could produce results about distant places, people, or events anywhere in time with nothing more than their minds. What this film does is it acts as a bridge to a new audience of truth seekers. You see, many people have never even heard about the more than 20 years of research or the compelling success stories over the life of the program. 
which spanned from the early 70s all the way up until the mid-90s. Now in the documentary, there are a number of different story arcs that the director masterfully interweaves to hold the viewer's attention over the course of the film. To begin with, we start by following Russell Targ, one of the primary physicists involved with the subject at the Stanford Research Institute as he travels around the country to speak with several of the people that he worked with in its heyday. It's definitely fascinating to hear the stories from each of the physicists, the CIA handlers, and even the military personnel on the matter almost 25 years after the program was declassified. Learning about the real-world practicality of trained ESP certainly changed their lives forever. Now, something that really struck a chord with me during the film was in one of the interviews where they were discussing the topic of the giggle factor, which is even though during the Cold War, the Russians were years ahead of the United States in terms of research, funding, they had their top scientists investigating extrasensory phenomena and its practical applications. But for many here in the West, it was almost too much to believe. Some of the top U.S. officials even concluded that the work was likely the result of the devil and they would have nothing to do with it. And even though there are tens of thousands of pages of credible research with nearly statistically impossible proven feats from finding the location of downed Soviet airplanes when no other avenues of intelligence could to predicting the detonation of a Chinese nuclear warhead three days in advance, still the idea that humans somehow have the ability to access information about distant targets with nothing more than their conscious awareness, often, even up to today, it comes off as a joke and it induces that faint laugh or surely you must be kidding, and usually that ends the discussion. Now, yes, the it does. And it, yes, is, it does. It I ends the discussion right there change. and right then. It ends the discussion. <laughs> you know why it ends the discussion? And you know why it ends the discussion. Because what you said earlier... A lot of people in the West believe that, you know, remote viewing and, and, uh, and ESP and, and, uh, and astral projection is of the devil. They believe it's of the devil. And then, and then they start giggling. Well, you know why they start giggling? Because it is of the devil. It is of the devil. And we laugh at the devil. We don't give place to the devil. 